Benvenuti. In English, that would be welcome. This is actually a gift from a, my dear uncle. We're standing in front of our Casa Colonica, as it would be called, an Italian farmhouse, beautifully re restored by my husband, Pino. In this door now is our living room. It used to be the entrance to the stall where I had 80 rabbits to feed. Behind the rabbits were six sheep. On this side of the house were pigs. We went up the stairs to the kitchen. Those are the bedrooms now. And adjacent to our house is the house that our children called La Casa Nuova, the new house, the house we stayed in while Pino restored the farmhouse. This is now an apartment. It sleeps many people actually. It has three bedrooms, two baths, and can sleep at least seven people. We have another apartment right next to it that can sleep a couple people. And below that, yet another apartment that sleeps four to five people. So you should come to our house sometime for a family reunion in the countryside. Today we're going to cook something together. So let's go over first and see the goats who've given us the goat milk cheese that Pino makes. I want to bring the goats some treats. Oh, they love rosemary. And oh, they love bay leaves. The bay leaf crown crowns our university graduates here. Bay leaf tea is also wonderful for upset stomachs. Let us go feed the goats. And I'll introduce you to the goats who give us the goat milk cheese. Please note our solar panels here solar panels on the roof, bringing in a lot of energy these days as we're going through extreme heats this summer in Italy, all over the world. We have 22 goats. Some are the chamois breed. If you comb their stomachs, you have cashmere wool. Yes, you'd like a little bit of rosemary? They're not nursing from their mothers anymore because Pino is milking the goats. So here are a couple of the little ones. Here's some treats for you. And we'll go right next door to meet their mothers. The mothers are far less timid. They're coming up for nibbles. And these are the mothers. Pino milks them in the evening to give us the goat's milk cheese. Formaggio di capra. And I had for breakfast this morning, goat's milk ricotta on toast with Pino's apricot jam. What a treat. Bon appetito. We're going to head to our vegetable garden to look for zucchini. And our vegetable garden is right behind our house here, where we also have some grapevines growing. And let's go into the vegetable garden. I'm going to the zucchini patch, which is right behind the lavender. It's soon time to pick the lavender. And lavender is what goes in our woolens in the winter. We make little sachets of lavender far more beautifully perfumed than mothballs and they do keep away the moths. Well, let's go into zucchini. You can see our zucchini are drooping. Very few tomatoes this year. We're into, of course, the hottest summer in history world over as everyone is red. And uh, we're just hoping that eventually the tomatoes will ripen. We're due to have rain perhaps in two days, we're all hoping. So let's go into the zucchini patch. We have a wild fennel plant here too. And I'm gonna snip a little wild fennel because oh, it'll be delicious in rosemary and sage with our chicken cacciatore, which I want to make as well. Up behind the fennel is our hill. We have uh, two donkeys up there, a few goats. They live right be below a peace flag, which I don't know if you can see there. And behind me is our land and we have planted barley this year for the feeding of our goats and the barley has all been harvested. Okay, let's check out zucchini. Very droopy plants, so much heat this summer, but I have two zucchini and this is exactly what I need for my pasta. Perfect. And that's about all I have actually are two of them. Tomatoes, as you can see, just not ripe at all as yet. Let us hope for a rainstorm soon. Let's go in and cook. Let's cook up some summer goodness here in our Umbria Rural Farmhouse Kitchen. 
And we're going to make a dish today, which is going to star Pino's goat's milk cheese. Formaggio di capra. We have 22 goats. He's milking four or five of them. Their kids are now old enough to be able to eat our hay, so Pino milks every evening. Today, we're going to make a pasta dish with one of his more seasoned cheeses, one of his more seasoned caprino, as the cheese is called. Actually, a very seasoned one I've already grated, and this will top off our pasta. I've been into our garden, found a couple zucchini, picked some of our parsley, some of our mint. They're gonna be finely diced with our beloved mezzaluna, the cradle knife, along with a couple of our garlic cloves. Uh, topping off the mixture will be our extra virgin olive oil, except no substitutes for extra virgin. Look at the lovely color of this olive oil. We're hoping for olive oil this year. Who knows, with extreme heat, even the olive trees are suffering this year. Well, let's start cooking. The first step will be to dice the zucchini and they will be added to the pasta water when it comes to a boil, along with this wonderful pasta, De Cecco. I highly recommend this. It's a superb Italian pasta. Uh, the shape I'm using today is fusilli, this twisted pasta, penne works well, as well as rigatoni. I have the pasta water boiling over on our stove. And as the pasta, this is a very quick recipe. I'm dicing the zucchini. And I just do a quick dice. And please do not buy huge zucchinis. You don't want the zucchini as big as footballs. You want nice, tender zucchini. So if you have a vegetable garden, pick it early and young. You shouldn't really see, look at this. We're not seeing the seeds yet. They shouldn't be formed in here already. And I will continue until I have all the zucchini diced. And then as the water comes to a boil, I throw in the pasta at a rolling boil, salt the water. We know how much salt, QB, quanto basta, as much as it takes, that'll be a couple handfuls. And then after the pasta is cooked, maybe four or five minutes, I add the zucchini. Our diced zucchini is ready to be added to the pasta. And I'm putting it in a bowl and I will take it over the stove, adding it to the pasta when the pasta has cooked for a few minutes. And I've also diced some garlic. And I'm going to serve the pasta with the pasta cooked with zucchini and then it's going to be topped with diced garlic and finely chopped fresh mint and fresh parsley. So now the next job is to chop the herbs. Normally I would dice all of the parsley right down to the very end of the stems, but today I'm feeling a bit generous. So these stems are going to the goats along with the tips of the zucchini. And now I'll continue. I'm gonna dice the parsley very finely and then I'm going to dice the mint as well. And now we're working with the mezzaluna. I just find this such delightfully therapeutic, chopping away with your own little rhythm that you set up and slide and chop, slide and chop. Let's pull in the mint, mixing them all together. Wish I could transmit the beautiful profumo. Finely diced with the mezzaluna. You can see how finely diced this is. Now I'm adding it to the chopped garlic, mixing it around a bit. Of course, when we add it to the pasta, we will have our extra virgin olive oil, and we're going to have some of Pinot's goat's milk cheese. And I'm just feeling these. This is a more tender one. These are very well seasoned and aged now. They're fine for grating. This is still fresh, so we're gonna chop this up. Now I'm cutting into Pinot's goat's milk cheese, que profumo. And of course, we don't need to eliminate any of the peel. That's part of the goodness. So I'm just gonna chop it into tiny pieces and it's going to be all ready to add to the pasta, which is going to be soon cooking with the zucchini. At a rolling boil, in goes the salt. Uno, do it. That should be enough for now. 
And then we'll put in two handfuls for every person. One. Two. And I think I'll make pasta for four today. So we'll have uh, eight handfuls. Bring the pasta to a rolling boil. We're going to give it a stir. And after it's boiled a couple minutes, we'll add the zucchini. So I'm going to cover it so I'll bring it to a boil very quickly. The fusilli is still very much al dente. Now it's time to add the zucchini. There it goes. Have you ever seen an easier recipe? Now, could we saute the zucchini in olive oil and garlic? Yes. I prefer not to heat up olive oil. I prefer that we're going to season this with fresh olive oil. Far better for the health. Now, we'll bring it to a boil once again. Then take off the lid, lower it, and soon our pasta and zucchini will be cooked. We're very close to having our pasta cooked and it has exactly the right amount of salt. And we'll soon drain it. And when we drain it, we save the pasta water called the brodo della pasta because a spoonful can be added to your sauce to make it creamier, as you'll see. I'm probably gonna add some brodino della pasta today to our pasta dish. E pronta la pasta, time to drain it. Gonna put it right back in the pot and then I'll be adding our sauce to it. It's all ready so I'm going to add our goat's milk cheese, diced mint and parsley, diced garlic right in the bottom of the pasta bowl. Then I'm going to add some of our olive oil. How much? Hey, quanto basta, as much as you need. And then we're going to add the pasta. We're gonna have a lot of zucchini on the bottom. So we'll clean out our zucchini here. Oh. Give it a mix. Let's turn it over. And now I'm just gonna add about a spoonful of the brodino to make it a little bit more creamy. Ah. And mix. And now I can see it getting the consistency I wish. And now we'll add the grated goat's milk cheese on top. I call this il caprino di pino, the goat's milk cheese of pino. And some of you may wish to add a little bit of chili pepper or black pepper as well. And now we're going to serve it up to family and friends with a buon appetito for the pasta le zucchini con il caprino di pino.